Hello everybody, before this video begins I would like to address that this may not actually be the SMC in hindsight. This may actually be caused by a limitation within the EFI's coding. But with all that aside, there's still something in the Mac that is affected by this and if it's a limitation in the EFI that would also cause problems with the SMC. Anyway, sit back and enjoy. This is a RUDK Mods video. Hello, I'm Greg Rutke of Rutke Mods, and welcome to episode 23 and a half of my Mac Pro series. This episode, I am going into further detail about episode 23, and the reason why you should not be using 8GB DIMMs in here Mac Pro. 1, 1, 2, 1. I originally filmed episode 23, and more and more things kept piling up after I finished filming it, and I decided I didn't want to refilm episode 23. So, this is going to be a continuation of it. Episode 23, I described a lot of things that were going wrong with my Mac, and those were still true. Though I did not have a temperature sensor problem, I actually think I was reading the wrong um, temperature sensors. Anyway, that, that was my fault, but the uh, SMC does actually still mess up the sensors pretty, pretty intensely, actually, when... Um, it's running 8 gigabyte DIMMs in it. I've been going over everything. Um, I put the extra explanations and stuff in the description, and I even re-uploaded the video to tell you that there was more explanations in the description. But considering a lot of people don't read the description, don't want to, or can't, or whatnot, I decided to make this video. The reason why you shouldn't be running 8 gigabyte DIMMs in your system is because even though the Intel 5000X chipset can support 64 gigabytes worth of RAM, and that's why the Mac Pro can use it, the SMC wasn't designed for it. The SMC maintains most important functions of your Mac Pro, or any Intel Mac in that case. And even though, like for instance, a Mac Mini 1, 1, when you flash the EFI to a 2, 1, you can add twice the RAM, twice the RAM, it's not really twice. Um, when you flash the EFI on this, it's still the same EFI, more or less. But the SMC is a little different. Uh, the EFI is designed for what it was designed for, the whole hardware in here. The SMC helps configure the whole system, make it run properly, and regulate everything, including fans, temperature sensors, USB plugs, this and that, it controls all of that. Well, SMCs are a little foggy on what exactly they do, but from what I can tell, the SMC also manages more than just power. It manages regulations and other things like bandwidth and stuff. So, even though the chipset, the 5000X from Intel, supports 64 gigabytes worth of RAM and each CPU supports 32 gigs each. Um, when the Mac Pro was originally made, it was designed to support 16 gigabytes worth of RAM across all eight slots, which would have been two gigabyte DIMMs. Now, when computers are designed, um, especially computers that have really new technology in it, they are kind of Design with an extra oomph to them for an expected future upgrade of something, even though the manufacturer may not have that in the specs. When the Mac Pro originally came out, 2 gigabyte DIMMs were the norm. In fact, I don't know if the 4 gigabyte DIMMs even existed. So Apple figured that 8 gigabytes worth of RAM on each CPU would be plenty enough, but when systems are being built, there's always room for more stuff in the future, upgrade-wise. For instance, manufacturers just expect there to be newer, better stuff that can go into their systems, so they usually leave holes open for that. Or sometimes it's just left in there for the programming because to take up the extra space in there. Even though they don't officially support that much, they can with no problem. And that's how this Mac Pro and all our Mac Pros, the 1, 1, 2, 1s, were written. They were written for a max of 32 gigabytes. 
or four gig dims at max. Eight gig dims is where we start having problems because the dims start bottlenecking through the SMC and slowing down the CPUs. Quite a lot from my testing actually. Even though I've seen proof, there's been proof all over online and in episode three and a half I had explained that someone had figured this out that it worked. I don't think it was really tested like I tested it and I'll tell you what it's you need to stay with 32 gigabytes period 16 gigs per CPU because the SMC just wasn't made for it. It bottlenecks it so painfully bad that the performance hurts honestly it hurts um, it's it's bad uh, you will be able to utilize all the RAM, but to utilize it, it will have to be a very labor, very memory labor intensive process that uses all the RAM, and it will take a long time for it to build up to it. In fact, when I was testing it in Windows, it took about a minute to get past 10 gigabytes before it would start getting up to the max of 30 gigs you need to for the operating system to continue running. Um, it got up to 30 gigs but it took much longer than it should have which means it was bottlenecking quite severely. And with all my Geekbench testing I found out that the um, diminishing returns it, it's not worth it. When I had tested my Mac Pro before I figured out the um, RAM controller problem with eight four gig dims I got a Geekbench score of 11777, where with the 4 times 8 gigs, I got a score of 11496. That's a big difference. In fact, I got a score for my 16 gigs of um, 15505, which is less than the 32 gigs. And every time I reran the test both ways, they were always about 10 points off, roughly. And it was always the 16 gigs actually beating out the 32 with the 8 gig dims. There was so many problems with this Mac Pro that it, it was unbelievable. It just ran like a dog. So would I recommend going to 64 gigs? No, no, don't. Honestly, do not go to 64 gigabytes. Don't go anywhere past 32 gigabytes because I even tested it with 24 gigs installed, which was two times four gigs and two times eight gigs. And the score was even worse than the 16 gig by a lot. It was a one, 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 seven, three. Why is this happening? Well, the reason why this is happening, like I said before, is the SMC. And as an example, I explained in the description uh, th this is like an example, like when you're using a four-way SLI on a system that can't quite handle it, the diminishing returns get to the point where you're actually hurting yourself using it, okay? So instead of having almost twice the power with two video cards and two and a half times the power with three, you're getting like two times the power with four. It happens. Well, this is the same basic idea more or less. Imagine it as like a river, like I described in the uh, description. This water, there's the same amount of water flowing through this river, and then all of a sudden you add more water coming in at more powerful speed. Now, imagine there's a giant bottleneck at the most important part of that river, which regulates the flow of the water back to the original speed. So even though there's more water going into it, it's actually just doing the same original speed of the water coming out. And with the turbulence in the water, some water is getting swished back around. And this is causing the water going through the end of it to slow down a little bit. This is the same basic theory that the SMC is the bottleneck. And if the SMC wasn't programmed the way it was, 64 gigabytes worth of RAM on a 1, 1, 2, 1 Pro would be a great thing. But honestly, it's a 10 year old system. And 32 gigabytes worth of RAM is plenty enough for a system that old. In fact, 32 gigabytes worth of RAM is still plenty enough for any system. In fact, we are just getting to points where 16 gigabytes is the bare minimum 
you would need for video gaming, for instance. But honestly, video gaming still is dominated by eight gigabytes. I still want to try to get 32 gigs, and I'm considering getting a logic board for 45 bucks on eBay, but I'm also considering just leaving it as it is. 16 gigs is still plenty enough, like I said before, and 32 gigs is still plenty enough. So going to 64 isn't worth it. I wouldn't waste that kind of money, and in fact, it would hurt the speed of the computer. So anyway, that is the end of this episode, and thank you for watching this episode. This has been a Rutkin Mods video.